Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Yosmos. Space exploration is my passion, a place that answers all your space questions. I am your Yosmonaut, Yash Mithal. Why don't you buckle up as we launch this episode. Today we talk about India's telecommunication satellite GSAT-30 that was successfully launched into a geosynchronous transfer orbit on January 17, 2020 from Kourou Launch Base, French Guiana by Ariane 5 VA-251. So let's begin. GSAT-30 is configured on ISRO's enhanced I-3K bus structure to provide communication services from geostationary orbit in C and KU bands. The satellite derives its heritage from ISRO's earlier INSAT or GSAT satellite services. Let's know what is I3K. I3K or the INSAT 3000 is a satellite bus developed by Indian Space Research Organization and marketed by Antrix Corporation and New Space India Limited. The I3K bus can supply DC power up to 6500 watts and is stable for satellites with lift off mass in the range of 3000 to 3400 kgs. The GSA-30 weighs 3357 kgs. It is to serve as a replacement to INSAT 4A spacecraft services with enhanced coverage. The satellite provides Indian mainland and islands coverage in KU band and extended coverage in C band covering Gulf countries, a large number of Asian countries and Australia. KU and KA satellites are bandied around quite freely. But do you really know what they mean and the difference between them? Let's find out. The band in use refers to the radio frequencies used to and from the satellites. L band uses frequency in the 1 to 2 gigahertz range. KU band utilizes approximately 12 to 18 gigahertz and KA band services uses 26.5 to 40 gigahertz segment of the electromagnetic spectrum. But it is only half the story. Physicist and mathematician Claude Sharon developed what became known as Sharon's theorem in 1948. This still holds true today and is a student essential to understanding satellite through puts. We ignore the math, but essentially it says the higher the bandwidth, the more data can be transferred. The higher the frequency, the more bandwidth is available. A high signal to noise ratio is better. An increase in the transmit power level can give an increase in the communication link throughput. So it isn't just about the frequency. You have to take into account the power density available. The satellite spot beams generally provide a high level be it on KU or KA band. And the headline bandwidth figure usually refers to the transponder bandwidth from the satellites. Now we need to share that out among the many users. Now let's know more about GSAT-30. The design in orbit operational life of GSAT-30 is more than 15 years. It is very very heavy weighing 3,357 kgs. It is a communication-based satellite. It has a GSO orbital satellite. Blasting off from the Aerial Launch Complex in Kourou, a France territory located in the northern east coast of South America at 2.35 a.m. IST, European Space Consortium, Aerial Space, Aerial's Five vehicle injected GSAT-30 into the orbit in a flawless flight.
India's high power communication satellite GSAT 30 aimed at providing high quality television, communications, and broadcasting services was successfully launched on board Ariane 5 rocket from Gua French Guiana in the early hours of Friday. The Indian Space Research Organization said here, blasting off from the Ariane launch complex in Kourou, a French territory located in northeastern coast of South America at 2.35 a.m. IST, European launch provider Arian Space Arian 5 vehicle injected GSAT 30 into the orbit in a flawless flight lasting about 38 minutes and 25 seconds. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed learning about ISRO's GSAT 30. Share and subscribe and don't forget your likes will encourage me.